I'm David Elder. <laughs> Join me as I travel to restaurants and share recipes from friends from all across the Lone Star State. Today's episode of Texas Eats is all about barbecue. We're going out to the Texas Hill Country to check out one of the best barbecue spots in the Lone Star State. Plus, we're going to hit up a food truck that's serving up some Midwest barbecue unlike anything else in this part of Texas. And HEB is with us today, showing us how to cook up some steaks and how to make cornbread in a cast iron pan. But first, we're going to check out a spot that's serving up some Bloody Marys and putting the bar in barbecue. Let's go inside the pig pen. Right here with me is Chris Conger. He is the pit master owner out here at Smoke Shack. You got a meat market and we're out here at the Pig Pen, which is a bar serving up some really fun and interesting barbecue items. We got a sandwich in front of us. You said this is a, a, a the Texas uh, hot chicken sandwich. You know, it's play off of the Nashville hot chicken. To spice it up a little bit, we use our, our chili pekin oil that we make in house. And that's, well, chili pekins are native to Texas. So that's why we call it the Texas hot chicken sandwich. So the chicken right here has that Pekin oil on there, that chili Pekin, and then you got your bread sourced from a local bakery yep. and some other great items on there as well. Yeah. Pickles, slaw, oh yeah. I gotta take a bite of this. Got mm. Oh wow. Dude, it's spicy. Yeah. <laughs> it's spicy. You're not joking, but it's a little sweet as well. Yep. Everything about this works. You got a really nice crisp on the outside of the chicken to the fries, right? It's still tender and juicy on the inside. The bread from Bread Box is just a winner. It's awesome. And it's so fun and it's compact enough to where you might have to eat two of these. Who knows? <laughs> that, thing, that thing is only $3.50. $3.50. You're definitely going to want to get two of these. Then. That's seven bucks. It's OK. You can spend $7 and get two sandwiches. Yeah. That's fun. So a Nashville hot chicken sandwich It's covered in sauce. You got the pickles. You got some of the slaw if you want to throw it on there. But it's all about the spice that's on the chicken. This one is a Texas hot chicken sandwich, and it does not disappoint. A chili pekin, it's native to Texas, covered in that oil from that pepper on there. So you got the spice. The fry on the outside is perfect, nice and salty, but tender chicken on the inside. It is so good, and it's so Texas. The actual link itself, we make it. So it's an all-natural casing, beef and pork blend. Uh, we put that on top of a little bed of chopped brisket some slaw on top, some onions and bacon, and some a uh, little bit of mustard. Woo, that sounds interesting. This is wild. And the cool thing is you make these, like you're making the hot dog, you know what I mean? And the, to have that much input onto the product that you're actually selling, they must feel really good. We got a great crew. Uh, the meat market guys are always coming up with fun stuff to, to link up. Our sausages are great. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of work. Making sausage is not easy, but um, it pays off. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Someone's Here we go. Yeah, I'll take a bite of this. I'm gonna take a half. I'm gonna take a <laughs> Woo! Dude! Great snap on the outside of that link. The meat that's in there as well. Everything couples together with those that raw red onion on top that really cuts through everything as well. So you're getting all the acidity, of course, the mustard, the red onion. It's the perfect blend. It's like the perfect barbecue bite. That is amazing. I'm gonna take another bite. This is really good. And talk about a wild hot dog. This is probably one of the craziest things I've ever eaten. You got the coleslaw that's on top, the crispy bacon pieces. You got all the different barbecue cut in the middle plus the hot dog that they're making right over here at the meat market. And then the roll itself, has a, it's soft and it has a nice butteriness to it. Everything really works well and it's a great balance of flavor. Brisket is king in Texas, so you know you gotta have it. And this is the ultimate combination of all those things into one. It's the Brisket Bloody Mary. It's, it's the most popular drink that we have. Just seemed fitting next door to Smoke Shack. So this is a drink that you serve, say, during like a brunch period or anything like that, like during the weekend? You know, people buy this all day. I mean, we'll, have, <laughs> we'll have, you know, you would think it'd be a morning drink or mid-afternoon, but uh, I mean, we have, we have customers buying that thing at 10 p.m. Really? Yeah, it's a little, it's a snack. Yeah. This is like a snack with your drink. All right, I'm gonna get a piece of this brisket. You grab this other little piece right there. You're serving up a Texas hot chicken sandwich. You got this wild barbecue hot dog and of course the brisket Bloody Mary. So cheers to you, sir. Cheers, you guys man. are making some great stuff out here. And of course you're right next to Smoke Shack. So we we'll walk on over and you get the full meal over there, but you come get some good snacks and good drinks over here. That's right. Hmm. 
I've seen bacon in a Bloody Mary, and I've seen a chicken wing in Bloody Marys, but I've never seen brisket in a Bloody Mary. And they're serving it up out here at the pig pen. It's a great Bloody Mary to start. It has a nice salted rim on there, but then you get the really unctuous flavor coming from the brisket. So you take a sip, you could dunk your brisket in it as well, and you get the olive. It's the best blend of the two worlds together. Right next door to Pig Pan is Smoke Shack. That's the barbecue joint that's serving up all kinds of Texas favorites. You got turkey, chicken, brisket, ribs, sausage that's made in-house at a meat market that's right next door to Smoke Shack. So it's a meat market, a barbecue joint, and a bar serving up wild barbecue items. This is like the ultimate spot to come to if you're a barbecue fanatic. Now, we're heading off into the hill country to go inside one of the top barbecue spots in Texas. We're in the Texas hill country near Bernie and near Sisterdale to go inside of a barbecue joint that's making some amazing Wagyu briskets and some killer desserts. Let's see what's smoking at Blackboard Barbecue. Jake Gandolfo, the man, the myth, the legend, is here with me right now. Blackboard Barbecue, of course, you know you got to try the brisket. That's a Texas staple, but you also have the sausage, the chicken, the coleslaw, and of course some other sides as well that we're going to be getting into. I know this feels like something that Disneyland would want to recreate. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? To like create that yeah. vibe, like, yeah. oh, Texas Hill Country, we'll make something like this. You couldn't recreate this, you know? That's kind of the point. I mean, this is a one-off deal, like this feel and this vibe. and. And that's before we even get to the to the food, to the to the right. smoke, right? Right in front of us. Yeah. This so is why Texas barbecue yeah. is Texas barbecue. You know, Texas, hugely brisket forward, brisket is king, right? So we wanted to take that to another level. I think Wagyu should be in everybody's face that's coming out of the great state of Texas, whether it's off the smoker or off the grill or off a flat top burger, whatever it is. It's just I'm so proud of the meat and so proud that it's from Texas, and it really works for us. It's something that's really come to define us. It translates phenomenally on the smoker as far as the process. It's intense, absorbs so much great flavor, right, from the smoke. I'm harvesting my own wood on the property. That's right, I cut my own live oak down <laughs> before I smoke the meat. That's how hardcore we are. My smoker is an old oiler smoker that was built up in Mesquite, Texas in 1976. She's been putting the stink on it almost as long as I've been breathing air. <laughs> I mean, it's like your mama's 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 best cast iron skill inside there. Right. So I can only take a little bit of the credit. She does all the work, right? Now, I'm not even interested in a fork and knife. I, I'm, I'm got my you sleeves already, rolled up. I was gonna say, you already got your sleeves rolled up. I'm You're going halfway in for this, there. Yeah, You're I'm going in there. for the brisket. And you uh, know, I've always been taught best way to test a brisket, it holds up on its own weight and yeah, it pulls it apart. Pulls apart That's some good yeah. brisket. Yeah. The fat looks rendered perfectly. Yeah. Oh, the smell. That's how brisket should smell. Right. Slightly smoky, but that meat flavor and the scent is coming through. Oh, that was a nice big bite. Nice big bite. Let me get some of that bark on there. Oh, yeah, now we're talking. That's it right there. Oh, yeah. mm. See, I get excited every time just watching people eat it. It's just, it's <laughs> awesome. I see gals, they're, they're their hair just standing right on end. I, I, I see guys just come to tears over this before. It's this just... is absolutely incredible. I've never used the word decadent to describe brisket. This brisket is decadent. You're sweet, my you're super sweet. This is melt in your mouth delicious. It has so much body to it, but the moment you go to chew on it, the fat, it just becomes like this little bit of like a salty vehicle to add, like run all those juicy flavors in. Yeah, yeah. And the meat yeah. is, everything's cooked perfect. Nice smoke ring around the yeah. outside as well. The bark is amazing because mm. it's it's light. And it's not overpowering the meat. It's the perfect amount of saltiness that you want. And a little bit of pepper that you get on there. And you can tell there's something different yeah, on there too. Yeah, a little something. A, a, little little something. a little something, something in there, yeah. Mm. I could eat that for dessert. The flavor on the outside, the bark, you can tell a little bit of salt and pepper on there. You're not gonna tell us what that spice is, but there's some kind of extra spice on it. And it melds so well with the meat on the inside and that fat flavor. This is what Texas barbecue is all about. So this is the jalapeno cheddar wild boar sausage. Yes, sir. House made mustard. This looks like some high quality mustard. Well, I love some good mustard. Yeah, so it got a little cardamom, got some coriander, of course, Scheinerbach beer. It punches you with a really deep mustard flavor that you want, kind of that like that little bite. Yeah. But when you pair it with that sausage link on yeah. there, which is already so savory, right. it marries so well together. I'm this glad, is incredible. I'm glad you get it, man. I, I, I'm glad. Like, this is that's get... good mustard. Two hundred years of family tradition, right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. 
Wow. Nothing. You know what? I'm gonna try it with, without no, the mustard first. That's right. Go to mustard. Nothing but love, right here, man. Mm. Oh wow! Once again, you have mastered the balance of saltiness. If you're not a venison lover, this is what you need to try. It'll turn you, right? It will turn yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. is great. Yeah. Yep. Good. Salud. Salud. My goodness. Dude, you just got, you keep the hits coming. Blackboard Barbecue has the two sausages on the menu. They have the one wild boar sausage that has the jalapeno and the cheddar cheese inside. But then they have a very special 200 year old venison family recipe sausage that is cram packed full of all different kinds of seasonings. And it has a really rich flavor to it. When you bite into it, you forget that it's venison. If you've never tried venison, you have that sausage. It'll change your whole perspective on what venison can be. I'm gonna go right for oh the back corner. It's got all that pecan back there. Oh yeah, you got like the I got nut my, action going on. I got on my right technique there. Cheers. down. Cheers. Salute. Nice to see you. Oh wow. And I love that you even went into detail and you added the little carrot on it. Yeah, just in case there was ever any questions. So <laughs> yeah. there's, so what there's kind of cake is this? So there's no confusion. Yeah, it's a carrot <laughs> cake. Yeah. That's incredible. I love it. Love it. I think it's a good mm. Yeah. That's yep. a good one. Salud. Okay. That is like a little bit of whiskey. If caramel was an actual right. like cake, right? That tastes like caramel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's incredible. That's, that is totally it. You got it right there. It is absolutely totally it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You remember when you were a kid and they used to have bake sales at school and you tried to get there as quick as you could to get the best perfect, like those crunchy but soft and gooey chocolate chip cookies. Anytime that my food can make you feel like that kid again or make you want to turn and hug your mama, for me, that is the score. That justifies everything I do, my purpose, my being as a chef. Well, chef, if my mom was right here, I'd hug her. Yeah. This is absolutely incredible. Nothing feels like a good, warm hug from mama like a hill country dessert. And they are doing a phenomenal job out here at Blackboard Barbecue. A carrot cake, some cookies, and some seasonal cobbler that you cannot get anywhere else. This is the real deal. Coming up next on Texas Eats, we go inside of a barbecue joint that's quickly becoming a Central Texas icon. And later in the show, we go inside of a brewery that's also serving up some of the best Tex-Mex barbecue that you can get your hands on. So don't go anywhere. Keep it tuned in right here on Texas Eats.
I know brisket is king in Texas barbecue, but this next spot we're going in is making some of the best smoked turkey in town. Let's check out D. Willie's Barbecue. It's Freddy Cruz, the man, the myth, right? You're out here making sure all this is going smoothly. And who's your pit master out here? Our pit master is my co-owner, Derek Willis. Derek Willis is a genius. This is your third location, right? This is the third location in two years. In two years? In That's two incredible. Years. It's because you're producing products like this. You guys have some of the juiciest, best smoked turkey in town. Well, it's just pure turkey breast, and we smoke it for eight hours in the smoke. Eight hours? Eight hours. So I know brisket is king in Texas. Of course, when you're in the Lone Star State and barbecue, that's the one item that you got to try. But when a place like this is cranking out this level of turkey, phenomenal. This is what you have to try when you come here. Do you know what the seasoning is? A little like, simple blend? Or? It's called D. Willie seasoning. <laughs> Everybody's got secrets. All right, well, I'm gonna try. You guys just slice this fresh, and look at this. It's just so tender. Barely even pull on it. <laughs> the smoky flavor, all the seasoning, it goes to the center of the turkey breast. That is absolutely incredible. That is really good. And then, of course, you got your pickles, your onions, your jalapenos on the side. Now, if somebody's really hungry, it's lunchtime. You also got a sandwich right here. That's right, ready to go. What kind of barbecue sauces do y'all have out here? We have two different barbecue sauces. We have our mild, and then we also have our spicy. Oh, is this mild or spicy? That's the mild. Okay. <laughs> if that was spicy, you'd be in trouble. Yeah, I was like, hold on, hold on. I just put a lot on there. But you got to dress it up, the pickles, the onions. That looks incredible. I'm going to take a bite. Mm. You in heaven? <laughs> Shut your mouth, Freddy. <laughs> that is delicious. So, Freddy won't tell me the secret, but it's just a really great blend of seasonings that's all put on the outside of their meat, plus the way that they're smoking it. It's the combination of the two together that makes this place really unique. And you know when you're in Texas, brisket is king, and you guys have some delicious brisket out here as well. I mean, look at the bark on the outside of this. Sure. Is it another secret that you can't share how you guys make this happen? Well, I can tell you it takes 24 hours to make it. Wow. Do you, can you tell me what's on the outside of it? No. D. Willie seasoning. <laughs> so Derek really has a lot of input into this whole process, right? Correct. It's smoking, and that's really how this all started. Derek was cooking out of a food truck. Freddie approached him, he had some of the barbecue, loved it. He told him, if you let me work with you, we could put this into places all across town. And sure enough, here we are in 2020, they're in their third location, and the barbecue is just as good as the first day I tried it. Oh my gosh, I can't even pick it up, it's so tender. Once again, brisket, you hold it up, you pull on it, and look how it's marbling. It has that nice fat rendered inside of it, like a honeycomb. This is how you know it is gonna be really good brisket. Mm. Gotta love it. Oh my gosh. Damn, he's a genius, man. This is crazy. When you're eating brisket, are you a pickled onions guy or are you like a straight brisket? Gotta have the pickles and onions. Yeah, you gotta have the pickles. And pickle. the jalapenos. I'm gonna go for a pickle on this one. Incredible brisket. Is there a certain kind of cut that y'all are using, like Angus or right. Prime? Right, these are all black Angus Prime briskets. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Right. That's how you, I mean, that's how you get that quality. And the smoke flavor on there too. Can you tell me what kind of wood you all use? Yeah, well, I'll tell you that. Uh, mesquite and oak together. Oh, okay, so it's a blend. Yes, it's Can a blend. Can you tell me the blend? Mesquite and oak. <laughs> no, like is that's it 50-50? It. It that's, no, that's it. it. Okay. I'm trying to learn the secrets here. This brisket and the turkey together, it's like the ultimate barbecue flavors mashed all in one place. Really, really good. But when you wrap it all up, you want to get something sweet, you got to get some dessert, right? That's right. And you have the banana pudding that was sent from heaven. Join me right here on this spoon. It is like a pillow of banana goodness. Look at you, what he went for it. Look at here. Okay. <laughs> this is insane. It is like all the flavors you love about banana pudding, you put into a blender or something, and then you made that into another kind of pudding, and then you put it in here with a custard, and then you covered it with bananas. I have no idea how that works, and you put some whipped cream in there, some Cool Whip or something. You can't have all this tasty barbecue without having a great dessert at the end. And of course, it's the banana pudding. That is the ultimate Southern Texas barbecue dessert, and they're doing it so well out here. I don't even wanna know how they make it because it'll ruin the mystique, but it is delicious. It is so good. Turkey, brisket, it's not just that though. What else do you have on the menu? We also have uh, ribs, and then we have sausage. We have chicken as well. 
Their barbecue menu is extensive, and it's actually pumping out some of the best smoked chicken that you can get in San Antonio. But you have sausage, smoked chicken, turkey, brisket, and their ribs. All together, it really is just a robust menu. So you can't go to a barbecue joint and not try the sides. And over here at D. Willie's, they have some really incredible sides. They have their baked potato salad, their mustard-based potato salad. They also have their mac and cheese, their green beans, their pinto beans. Everything on here is just really, really awesome, and it goes really well with the barbecue. Coming up next on Texas Eats, we go in the kitchen with H-E-B to learn how to cook up some tomahawk steaks and bone-in pork chops. And later in the show, we go inside of a barbecue food truck that's serving up some Midwest barbecue flair. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now, we're in the kitchen with H-E-B to learn how to cook up a tomahawk steak and a bone-in pork chop with Chef Scott Tompkins. Scott, what kind of meat do you have right here in front of us? So we have our beautiful uh, beef tomahawks, and then we also have our pork tomahawks. That's so, uh, how you kick off rodeo. That is exactly. You want to get your hands on some steaks. Big That's how you do it. piece of thick meat. So this is about, <laughs> like, I mean, it's about two inches thick, maybe a little more. You can't just throw these things straight onto the grill like this. you got to season them up. So what kind of seasonings season do you them up. have? So we've done two different kind of seasonings, and both could work for this 100%. OK, so for the pork tomahawk, we're going to do a toasted spice mixture that consists of our uh, tillatory black peppercorns, our little crushed red pepper, fennel seeds, juniper berries, and of course our cumin seeds. So these all get toasted in a dry pan. For the steaks, I did a chili citrus salt. So it's basically taking two pantry items. This is an ancho chili powder and any chili mix you like. Mix it with kosher salt and add orange and lemon zest to it. And the longer it sits, you can kind of actually see some of the little clumps in here. Oh, yeah. still some of the zest. The longer it sits, the more moisture the salt will draw out of the, of the citrus and the zest itself. And then it'll become a little more dry and then it's a little more, a little more available to sprinkle instead oh of like clumping. Gosh. We're gonna do a lot of seasoning because these are very thick cuts of meat. So don't be shy. I obviously like a lot of seasoning on my... Uh... You can't really over season or can you over season? You want a liberal amount. So whatever liberal means to you, I would <laughs> yeah. say liberal amount. As don't crazy go, uh... as you want to get, right? Exactly, don't go chintzy on it. And uh, because we're doing a bone in cut, you wanna let this sit out at room temperature for at least, I would say 30 to 45 minutes. Because if you were to take this out of the chill chest, Put it right on the grill. You've got so much cold right where the bone is. By the time this is all to the perfect doneness that you like, all this bone in here where all the meat is is completely still raw. So you want to let it sit out so everything has a chance to kind of 
come to room temperature and settle down. And these go onto our preheated grill, and that's it. Really simple. And these are ready to rock and roll. Grill then. them up, yeah, there, that is it. That's all we're doing. And well, let's do it. Just need some great cornbread to go with it. <laughs> Because it has the bone in it, you can set it up on the side of the bone. So now sometimes you have to rig this, you may have to kind of hold it up or, or, or kind of rig it against or sit it against something. Usually I can kind of rig this to where it'll stay somewhat up. Usually you can kind of wedge the bone down the grill a little bit. So wedge the bone on the side, put it up like that, and exactly. it'll cook and finish without getting any more dark. Exactly. That's a teachable moment. If I hold it, it's perfect. So then that's it, and we're just gonna let it rest and then we'll cut into it a little bit. While the steaks rest and before we feast, HEB chef Charlotte Samuel is going to show us how to make cornbread in a cast iron pan. And coming up next, we go inside of a brewery that's also serving up some of the best Tex-Mex barbecue that you can get your hands on. So don't go anywhere. Keep it tuned in right here on Texas Eats. Hey everyone, I'm Scott. And I'm Charlotte. And it is the season. All of the football games are wrapping up and all commencing to the big game. The big game. So if you're entertaining, if you're going somewhere, it's always good to have a few extra recipes, a few extra tips, and something simple. And this is in that wheelhouse of something that's great to do if you're throwing a party or having a big, a big shindig. I think celebrate. this encompasses the football crowd. It yes. is beer yep. and cheese. Yep. And it's melted. And it's IPA. Woohoo! All right, take us through it. All right, we got? so in our pot, we have our aromatics um, and our beer, and we kind of cook that all down. It, reduced it smells the beer a little so bit. good. Cooking out the alcohol, totally safe for the kids. You as well. added the um, evaporated milk, evaporated and then milk. now we're going to add in our shredded cheese, so what's thick all cut cheese. Over that? This is cornstarch. Oh and God. so the cornstarch is going to help thicken it without having to make a roux, so it's not going to really separate. It's going to be great, all right? All right, so that and goes then in. we're going to add in our green chilies. Green chilies, we did the whole can. I like the Just extra, the whole can. Yep, the do, whole do, thing. Do, do. Okay. Toss it all in there. And this is a mild green chili. If you want to do a half, a super, super hot one, you can. Yeah, go ahead. It's really, really simple. So we're just going to bring this, uh, we'll turn up the heat a little bit, we'll let yeah. it whisk. And you, it needs to come up to a simmer for the cornstarch to activate. Exactly. And so we're yeah. using a Colby Jack cheese, which is really, really uh, nice. There. And to see it. serve this with your favorite IPA, and for this and other recipes, log on to kset.com slash H-E-B.
What's better than great barbecue and great beer? How about getting them both together in the same spot? That's what's happening over here at Weathered Souls Brewing Company. Andrew from South Barbecue and Kitchen has taken over their kitchen and he's cranking out some delicious food. And you know we gotta drink some beer while we're in there. Let's go check it out. Andrew is here with me, owner and pit master of South Barbecue and Kitchen. And actually, you've taken over the kitchen over here at Weathered Souls Brewery, and you have some delicious food on the menu. And I can't wait to try all of this. But talk to me about this platter right here. This is a little bit of the barbecue items, yes, plus some fun tacos, right? Prime certified Angus beef brisket. I've sliced off some of the uh, the fatty end for you there, the moist. Also with a couple little burn ends on the side, because everybody loves those. Here, get a piece with me, man. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy your product with me. Yeah, cheers, man. Cheers, I will. Thank you. <laughs> Mm. You can never get enough. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. Thank you, thank you very much. The little burnt end parts are like mm. possibly the best part of a good brisket. I believe so. Mm. You really gotta go low and slow to render all that fat in there and also develop that nice bark on the outside. It's like it, it you have got into almost a crystallized form. Yes, sir. The texture on this is perfect. Thank you. And the bark, it's a nice salty on the exterior, but when you go inside and you, you meet that, with the unctuous flavor from that brisket. And of course, you got pickles and onions, because yeah, yeah. that's what you gotta have with your barbecue. So homemade pickles and onions, and not to be overshadowed by the brisket, but the pulled pork, it's really nice as well. And it's just got that really nice salty, fatty pork flavor. It's just all one piece, right? I'm just gonna... <laughs> yeah, some it's people like kinda nacho, chop right? the pulled pork yeah. up, but we prefer to kinda pull it in long strands, kinda traditional in like the Carolina style. Mm. The brisket one here has got guacamole, our salsa verde, and the, and the chopped brisket. You have found the balance of Tex-Mex and barbecue, and you, this taco is absolutely amazing. The little guac that's on there, and that little salsa verde, yeah. that's, that's my spicy, favorite thing on the menu. creamy. Yeah. I want like 10 more of these yep. things. Absolutely delicious. And you said you're making all this in-house, right? The, the cheese? Yeah, everything except the tortilla chips. Whoa. Those are amazing nachos. Thank you, sir. And it's all about the cheese on that. Of course, your barbecue, it shines through, but with the tomatoes, the onions, that little pico, the guy that you have on there, but then the cheese is just phenomenal. Mm, I you. want that on everything. Yeah. You can put that all, you just cover all this with that cheese. I'm yeah. gonna eat it all. And of course, every Sunday, you can come out here for yep. your brunch, and you're serving up items just like this waffle out here. It looks absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about this. This is a uh, blueberry waffle, Belgian style that we make with the batter. Then we smear a nice uh, house-made whipped apricot butter on top of the waffle. Um, hit it with some of these kind of like brulee or caramelized bananas that we do with the blowtorch, and then some homemade whipped cream, caramel sauce, and some walnuts. Sugar overlord for sure, but um, he controls the sugar universe. Oh, give me that banana! Yeah, on the there. bananas where it's at. Yeah. Bro, bro. Thanks, man. What are you doing, bro? It's, it's, it's so good. simple. So simple. Absolutely incredible. That rivals brunch spots that I've Thank been you, to. Man. You have just created right here in front of me. I'm tasting it right now. One of the best <laughs> waffle things I've ever had in my whole life. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Andrew, the barbecue is absolutely incredible. And of course, you're wrapping up this delicious dessert, but you can't be here at a brewery and not enjoy the beer. With me now is the man, the myth, the legend out here, the mad scientist, Marcus Baskerville. And you're creating some incredible brews out here. So what we have here is our Imperial Stout Cavernous chocolate, um, some different caramel characteristics in it, but this is basically what we use for a base for a lot of our uh, specialty beers um, with some of the heavy treated stouts. This, when you said caramel, that was the first word that came to my mind. It's so, it's nice and thick, it's a full bodied beer, and it tastes like a meal. And it's not. <laughs> very heavy. It's sure. very yeah. heavy. This is really good. Mm. Doppelbach basically is a double version of a Bach, but it's a heavier version with uh, lots of caramel, melanoid and malts, uh, heavy malts period within it, 10% uh, lager. So something different uh, since typically we're heavy on stouts and oh. IPAs. Well, that is very different. That is really good though. I mean, everything you guys do out here is always delicious, and I would almost dare say everything's a little creamy. You guys do. A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. You like to, you, you add it, it's like a special little touch you can only get when you come out here to Weathered Souls. This is really good. And these are sipping beers. Yes. This is not come out here and like, woo! This yeah, is actually so. come out here and enjoy a really solid beer. Both are amazing, and I'll tell you what, they would both go really well with all this delicious food that's being cranked out here as well. You guys are killing it. Keep doing your thing, man. 
Andrew, Marcus, you guys both rock. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 Great food out here at Weathered Souls, and of course, great beer as well. Sunday brunches, right? Sunday brunch, yes, sir. That's where it's at. I'm going to sip this and probably eat the rest of this. I need to eat that top. Coming up next on Texas Eats, we go back in the kitchen with H-E-B to learn how to make cornbread in a cast iron pan. And coming up later on the show, we head inside of a food truck that's serving up some Midwest barbecue right here in Central Texas. So don't go anywhere. Keep it tuned in right here on Texas Eats. Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're with Charlotte, and she's going to show us how to make cast iron cornbread. I'm super excited. Oh my god, it could be a meal. We have our cast iron skillet okay. heating, because we want to get our cast iron skillet hot, so that when we pour in our batter, it creates that like crust. crust. Yeah. So I've already measured out your ingredients. Okay. We have a little bit of flour with some um, baking powder in that, and that's going to be our um, chemical leavener. So you can go ahead and add that to the bowl. Okay. The next thing we're going to add is going to be a corn flour. If you wanted to make this completely gluten-free, you would just add um, all corn flour instead of um, AP flour. This is actually um, grits, corn grits oh, or okay. um, polenta. And again, it goes back to that texture. So I like a little bit of bite into my, in my cornbread. And then to this, we're going to add in, we're going to add two eggs, um, about 10 tablespoons of butter. Yeah. And then we're going to use buttermilk. And buttermilk is key to this recipe because this is also going to give us um, some flavor, but also more of that leavening, right? So add that in. Oh my goodness, this looks decadent. Right, it's so good. <laughs> and then we're gonna add a little bit of honey for sweetness, and we're also gonna add some roasted corn. And I went ahead and grilled this corn. That roasted corn is very, that's essential, right? Because yes. that really brings out a lot of those sugars. Right? Look at you, chef. I know some things, so yeah, I know some do. things. And while you're doing that, I am going to get our hot skillet you really don't want to mix it that much? Is that a what it is? A spoon or a spatula is okay. perfect for that. Okay. It keeps you from over whisking or mixing, and it's um, Ooh, that is it's hot. really hot. Look at that. Then we're going to add, I'm going to add a little bit of butter to this. Yeah, you are. Look at that. Oh, it's ready to go. See how hot that is? There's something special about butter in a hot pan, oh isn't it? Oh my god, the smell. Oh, hey, well, it's can talking we do to us. It, can we do it in slow mo? <laughs> Gotta get all the goods out of there. You can see it, look how it's making that beautiful. Oh my gosh, 
It's talking to us. It it's saying beautiful. something. It's saying that it's going to be eaten later. Eat this is eat, eat me. All right, I'm going to put this back in the oven, and I do about 22 minutes, 25 minutes, um, and then what I do is I shut my oven off, okay. and I just let it sit in there for a little while and cool a little bit in the oven, and then that crust develops, and then you could like brush a little bit of honey on top if you want. You could do all sorts of fun stuff. When you're talking about kicking off rodeo, doing it the right way, you got to do some cast iron cornbread. That's the way you do it. Yes. Steaks are cooked perfectly, they're rested, you sliced them up ready to go, and Charlotte, you have the cast iron cornbread right out the oven, got the butter on top, ready to rot. You guys, yeah, everything's ready. To get these recipes, of course, head on over to kstat.com slash Texas Eats. We have it all right there for you, and now it's time to try it. Oh, thank you. Coming up next on Texas Eats, we head inside of a food truck that's serving up some Midwest barbecue right here in Central Texas. So don't go anywhere. Keep it tuned in right here on Texas Eats. This is everything delicious about Midwest barbecue in a cup. Get that, that's crazy, right? We're here at Fort Sam Houston to go inside of a food truck that's serving up some killer Midwest barbecue unlike anything else you can get in Texas. Let's go inside the Purple Pig barbecue food truck. We're now here with Dimitri Heron. He is the co-owner and pit master out here at the Purple Pig Barbecue Food Truck. Uh, we started about four years ago uh, here on Fort Sam Houston. Actually, we started off in a 10 by 20 tent right here in the same location. That's so cool to go from a, a tent to a trailer to a food truck. Now you have this Purple Pig empire. That you're going, right? <laughs> 26 years, United States Army. Ooh, thank you for your service. That's, <laughs> thank a, you. that's a long time. 26 years doing anything is a long time, but the military, that's, that's great, man. Thank yeah. you so much. And your wife as well? Yes, retired? Yeah, my wife is retired at uh, Air Force. 
Now you're just giving back to the community that you were a part of. A part of. That is so cool. Well, our business is a family-owned business. Myself, my wife, and um, my sons and my daughter. Well, we do a Midwest-style barbecue with a Texas twist. What is our specialty is rib tips. Nice, tasty uh, piece of meat uh, from, uh, from the uh, end of the rib. So these are the piggy tips that you can get out here at the Purple Pig Barbecue Food Truck. Now check this out. I'm actually coming prepared. I got a fork in my pocket. So you said this is the end of a rib. Got some of the fat on there. You got some barbecue sauce. Is this a special house-made barbecue sauce yes, as well? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm excited. Don't mind me. I'm just going to go in for it. <laughs> That's incredible. All right. That's real good. It's everything you love about a rib, but put into a really bite-sized, edible version. You don't have to worry about the bone. I love that. And there's a little bit of gristle in there. So you're getting some of that little texture from there as well. That barbecue sauce is phenomenal though. The sweetness is playing really, really well with the salty flavor. It's a really good balance of everything. This is, this is phenomenal. I'm gonna have another bite. And you're serving it with a piece of bread. Yeah. Is there any secret you can share with people at home how they can do really good barbecue? Uh, just take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Low and slow. Any kind of, what kind of wood do you use? Uh, we use pecan wood. Hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Something not typical to Texas barbecue is definitely the focus on pork items, which you're going to find more in the Midwest. And that's what they're serving up out here with their piggy tips. It's the rib tips that you can get only at this food truck. And it's all the fat flavor that you get on the edge of a rib. A little bit of gristle in there. It's all the texture and the flavor that you want from a rib. But in this little fork tender bite sized pieces covered in this Midwest barbecue sauce, and you can get it mild or spicy. I'll tell you what though, you get this spicy, change your life. It's delicious. Now, right here, this is the barbecue parfait. You can only get it out here at the Purple Pig Barbecue Food Truck. You got a lot going on. Yes, we do. Well, it's, uh, we call it again, barbecue parfait. So it's layered uh, starting from the bottom house baked beans, baked macaroni and cheese. The next layer is our pulled pork. Uh, with our barbecue sauce, we have three flavors of barbecue sauce, sweet, mild, or hot, so you get your own flavor to it, and topped with our um, potato salad and our slaw. Oh my god, this is everything you want from barbecue in one cup. Why serve it like this? What gave you this idea? Well, doing the festivals and, uh, you know, large events and things like that, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to, you know, serve a full plate. I got some of the slaw, some of the potato salad, a little bit of the pulled pork, and the barbecue sauce. Besides everything on the bottom, this is, this is what you want in one bite. I love that slaw. I would drink this if y'all if y'all wouldn't judge me. The possibilities there. It's layers of potato salad, mac and cheese, the coleslaw, the pulled pork, the barbecue sauce, everything just melding together and getting married to all those flavors. And so it's a vinegar bite, it's fatty, it's cheesy, the ultimate barbecue bite. Today's barbecue episode is in Old Town Holotus. This locally popular barbecue spot started as a food truck. Now, they're one of the top rated barbecue spots in the state. Let's go inside B Daddy's Barbecue. Owner BR opened the joint four years ago in Old Town Holotus, serving up favorite barbecue items that people have come to love from his food truck he started seven years ago. I have been barbecuing for a living for seven years, been barbecuing for fun my whole life. They're serving up brisket, ribs, sausage, outstanding sides, and a brisket grilled cheese sandwich. This whole wall barbecue joint is making some of the best barbecue you can get anywhere around Military City USA. You got the brisket, the turkey, sausage, all the ribs here as well, mac and cheese, coleslaw, beans, and the cream corn. Everything here has its own unique flavor, including a hint of spice inside of the cream corn that makes it unlike anything else. Now this is what I actually, this is what I came here for. This monster is one of the ribs that they have out here, and it's actually been written up in Texas Monthly Magazine, and it is worth the drive. This is the place to come to. There's a huge outdoor area where you can bring the kids. This is one of the best barbecue spots that nobody knows about in this area. Absolutely fantastic. We have a huge outdoor backyard, covered patio, play area for the kids. During the spring and summer on Saturday nights, we'll run live music. It's just a family-friendly environment. Parents can come and have a beer or two. Backyard's fenced, so it's secure. 
kids play on the playscape, run around the yard, do all that bit. And once you come, you'll come back again, I promise you. Thank you for watching today's episode of Texas Eats All About Barbecue. And don't forget to tune in to Texas Eats every Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on KSAT 12.